the topic is what al quran says about jihad this word jihad is not translated into the languages of the people it's an arabic word but people do not translate jihad means to strive or to struggle but generally it has been promoted by the media as holy war the war so i will like to give you the meaning of the war english word, word war in arabic it means harab 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 means war jihad means to strive to struggle irhab means terrorist terrorism and qatl means to kill irhab means terrorism harab means war qatl means to kill and the topic today is jihad which means to strive and struggle so ladies and gentlemen before we discuss the ayats as to what quran has said about jihad in the ayats of allah i would like to tell you that all of us all of us whether muslims or non muslims are doing jihad meaning they are struggling they are striving but what what are they striving for they will explain to you if you ask them what is your mission in life what is the most important factor in your life or what is your aim in life if a student of any student of any theology wants to become something he joins uni- universities or schools he wants to become an architect or engineer or doctor so he struggles for that he strives for that so in other words he does jihad to become a doctor jihad he struggles to become a doctor that means he is doing jihad he struggles or strive to become an engineer engineer that is jihad he he does jihad to become an engineer you must know the meaning in arabic people use these words the christians arabic speaking people use this word jihad the jews arabic speaking people use the word jihad in their language it's a arabic word so it is not only related to the muslim community the word jihad the people who are striving for anything they are doing jihad for that thing now the, if the muslim most of the muslims well all the majority of the muslim must be doing something in their lives meaning they must be having some aim in life or careers in life and for that they are working they are doing jihad for that but that jihad is not as quran or allah says in the ayats that is allowed that's not permit, not uh, forbidden for you not to do that you can do that but in the so in the governing by the governing ayats you have to control and see am i not doing wrong or right so what quran says or what allah says to do jihad that is our lecture when we refer this word to allah and the islam then we have to see how allah says that you have to struggle for what or you have to strive for what so being a muslim muslim means is muslim is an, 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 again another arabic word muslim means submitter i submit to allah so i am muslim to allah submitter to allah muslim means submitter so if i submit 
to what? So whatever I submit, I am a Muslim to that. Like jihad, I, if I do jihad to become a doctor, I am doing struggling or striving for doctor. Similarly, Muslim means to submit. A person who submits, if he submits to attain the good pleasures of Allah, so he is a Muslim submitter for Allah. For Allah. So he is a submitter, Muslim for Allah. So in that concept, Allah has mentioned in the, in the, I will be reading the ayahs, that a person in this world should live in peace. And that word in Arabic is salam. And, and the word Islam is come from the root letter salama, which means to attain peace. I said salamu alaikum peace be unto you. Islam means to attain peace. So if all the people in the world would like to live in peace, but to live in peace, there are certain rules and regulations laid down by Allah in, in the ayahs, that if you follow these ayahs, then you can attain Islam, you can have peace, you can attain peace, you can have Islam, you can attain peace. So first of all, you have to submit, meaning Muslim, Aslim. You have to become a Muslim or you have to become, you have to submit to what? To the governing ayats, to the muhkamat ayat, governing ayat, signs. First, I submit to the governing ayas and what I will attain? Islam or to attain peace. I will have peace in my, in my mind. I will have peace. For that if I work or I struggle or I strive to follow those governing ayas, that is jihad in Allah or in the ayats. This is how the lecture you have to understand. The purpose of every human being in the world is that he wants to live in peace. That is to attain Islam or attain peace is Islam. Every, every human being. And in the Quran it is mentioned on the day of judge, after, after we die there is an accountability day. We have to give our accounts and on that day we have to ha enter into garden. Jannah. So a Muslim keeps in his mind all the time that after I die, I must go and enter into Jannah or attain good pleasures of Allah. But to, to attain that, to achieve that, I have to do jihad. I have to do strive. I have to struggle by the governing ayahs or by the do's and the don'ts as mentioned in the Quranic ayahs. There are certain rules you have to follow and obey as Allah says in the ayahs. And there are certain don'ts as he mentioned the ayahs in the, his governing ayahs or in his muhkamat ayahs. Why I am doing it? I am struggling and, and struggling and striving to attain Jannah, the garden on the day of judgment. That is, I have to do, I have to struggle and strive, that I have to do jihad. But in this world, what I will get? I will get peace in the world. In this world, I will have peace of mind and heart. But on the other side, I will attain, uh, I, I will get good pleasures of Allah and the Jannah, that is garden. So keep in, in, your, in our minds that we Muslims, do jihad. Every Muslim does jihad or strive because his object is to enter garden. That is his aim and goal. On the day of judgment, I must enter into garden. I must be, uh, God, Allah should be pleased be, by me, my actions. My actions should be governed by the ayats, not by my own vain desires. They should be governed 
by the Allah's ayahs, the muhkamat ayat, the do's and the don'ts. So this is how the lecture will go on. So remember, we, I will recite the ayahs about the word jihad, to strive and struggle, and we'll see how the Quran explains, but you must keep in your mind that there are certain do's and don'ts in the Quran. There are many, many ayahs that are referring for the do's and the don'ts. But I have just to give you a sample or an example on the first page, if you will note. I will read certain, these are not complete ayahs, just to explain to you what are the do's and what are the don'ts. When I'm using the word do's, there are certain things or actions we have to do. And there are certain action, actions that we should forbid or we do not do. For example, in the page, first page, Surah, Surah Al-Isra 17 Surah and Ayah 78 Ayat, the reference is that we have to establish the Salah, the prayer. This is one do that we have to establish the Salah. Mention this Ayat. This is a big Ayat, but I'm just pointing out the order that we have to establish the Salah. Al-Baqarah 2 and Ayah 185, it mentions in that complete ayah that we have to fast. That's a do. Order to fulfill. Al-Baqarah 2, 196, 196 ayah to perform pilgrimage. Who have got the means. So a person who has got the means to visit to Mecca, Saudi for pilgrimage, he has to do that. In Al-Mujadala 58:12, to give sadaqa charity. He ha these are the do's. I am reading those points which you have to understand. These are the do's of the Quranic ayahs, the governing ayahs. Surah Al-Hajj 22, Ayah 78, you have to struggle, strive for Allah, jihad in Allah. Surah Al-Nisa 4, 3, you have to marry. 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever the requirement as per your situation. This is an order by Allah that you have to marry. One or two or three, whatever the condition, but you have to marry this in order. Then, Al-Baqarah 2 to 29, the order of divorce is given. People say that Allah does not like divorce. No, Allah simply says that if, I'm not, this is not the lecture or a topic of divorce, a believer and non-believer cannot live together. A khabis and a tayyab, a good and a bad cannot live together. According to Allah's ayahs, Allah divorces women from men or from men, women, if they are not one of the, if one of the person is not believer. He separates them. Very simply, in the eyes of Allah. So that's an order, that you divorce the wives if they are not practicing believing women. So that's a separate topic. But I'm just telling you that it is an order of Allah that you divorce your wives. Then Al-Nisa 4 and Ayah 11, there is a whole inheritance law is given that this is the amount of money that has to be distributed to among, the, among his uh, sons and children. That, that is also a do. You have to make sure that they should be distributed according to the order or the governing ayahs of Allah when you go from this world. Surah Al-Isra 7, 23 and 24, that the children should be good to the parents. Children-parent relationship, that the children should be good to their parents. This is a commandment that we should follow. Al-Baqarah 2, 172, eat lawful food. Eat good and lawful food. It is the whole description is mentioned, the ayahs, what is a lawful food? The anam, the cattle. So now if you look at the other side, the don'ts are mentioned. I, they are not only the do's, there are many, many do's in the governing ayahs of Allah. I'm just trying to explain to or emphasize the point that there are do's and don'ts in the ayahs by virtue you have to struggle and do jihad to achieve Islam, Salam, peace in this world and God on the other side and good pleasures of Allah. What is the don't? Surah Al-Nisa 4 and Ayah 29. Do not eat wealth with falsehood. Do not eat your wealth by falsehood, by cheating, by forgery. Al-Hujrat 49, 12. No suspicion is allowed in Islam. You cannot, suspicion is not allowed. At times, suspicion 
or conject to conject is a sin. No backbiting is allowed. No backbiting. In al Hujurat 49, 11 ayat, sarcasm, bad name, no sarcasm to people, no bad names to people, no nicknames to be given. Al Maida 5 and verse 38, ayah 38, no theft, no robbery. Now these are the no, you have to not to do that, not to do this, not to do this. Al Maida, Al Isra 17 and ayah 31. Not to kill children due to poverty. Al Isra 17, Surah 33, ayat, suicide. Not to kill himself. You see the suicide bombing? You cannot kill yourself. This is, this is don'ts of the ayahs of Allah. Don'ts, do, not to do, not to do. Don'ts, you have to fulfill that. al maida 593, no drugs, no drinkings, no gambling. al maida 53, not to eat the poor. There are unlawful food mentioned, not to drink blood, not to eat the poor, not to eat the food which other than the name of Allah has been taken. Al-Nur 24 Surah verse 19, Pornography, Faisha exposed or hidden, not allowed. Surah Al-Araf 7, Ayah 33, No adultery, no homosexuality, no lesbianism, etc. So there are many don'ts and there are many do's. We Muslims, we have to do jihad, we have to strive and struggle in following the do's not only this, I have given you these as examples. You have to make sure that I practice these which are mentioned that I have to do. And I have to forbid from the ones that are don'ts. I forbid myself from those which are mentioned that I do not have to do that. that when I will do this, that is the struggle, that is the strive that I am doing to achieve what? Peace in this world, peace in this world and on the day of judgment that Allah is pleased with me and get the garden. That is the aim of a Muslim. Submit her to Allah. Surah Tawbah 9 and Ayah 111. How I explain how to kill in the way of Allah. In Allah ashtara min al fuzam wa walam bi anna lom jannah yuqatiluna fi sabila fayaktuluna wa yuqtaloon. وَعَدًا عَلَيْهِ حَقًّا فِي التَّوْرَةِ وَالْإِنْجِيلِ وَالْقُرْآنِ وَمَنْ أَوْفَى بِعَهْدِهِ مِنَ اللَّهِ فَاسْتَبْشِرُوا بِبَعْكُمُ الَّذِي بَعْيَاتٌ بِهِ وَذَلِكَ هُوَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَزِيمِ Surely Allah has purchased from the believers their souls and their wealth is garden for them. They fight in the way of Allah. Then they kill and get their souls killed. A promise on Him in truth, in Tawrah and in the Injil and, and, and the Quran. Uh, uh, and who can fulfill his promise than Allah, then rejoice with your deal that you bargain with him. That is the supreme achievement. Now if you look in this ayah, that Allah has purchased the believers, the believers, from the believers, Allah has purchased from the believers what? Their nafs, their psyche, and their wealth. When Allah has purchased the psyche, and the wealth from the believers, that means your psyche, your own desires are no more because you've already sold. You are being sold. Allah has purchased your psyche means nafs. In Arabic is anfusam. In Allah Shra Mina Anfusam. Allah is not it is not hayat. You don't have to give your life. He is asking your psyche where your desire and feelings and emotions are. So you have to Align yourself with the ayahs of Allah because He says Allah has purchased your nafs, your psyche. So your psyche is submitting to the ayahs. So He is, a, in a way, you are you are giving your psyche to Allah. Allah is purchasing you. So it is no more yours. So whatever you will do is whatever the Allah says. You can only act on your own account when you have your own psyche. When you have given your psyche or you have sold your psyche, it is not your not yours, and your wealth is not yours. So for that he says, and against garden, you take the garden and you give your souls. Not physical death, you give your soul, means you lead a life according to the plan of Allah. So that is giving your soul. 
سو اللہ از پرچیز یور نفس اور سائکی اور سول ان اگینسٹ وتھ جنا ناؤ اللہ ایکسپلینز واٹ یو ڈو یو کار تیلو نا فی سب اللہ دے فائٹ ان دا وے آف اللہ ہاؤ دے فائٹ اگینسٹ دیر سولس بیکاز یور دے ہیو ٹو گو دیر سولس ٹو اللہ بیکاز دیر آر سرٹن ڈوز اینڈ ڈونٹس ان دی آئی آرس سو دوز ڈوز آئی ہیو ٹو پریکٹس دیٹ مینس آئی ہیو ٹو کل مائی سائکی آئی ہیو ٹو فائٹ ان دا وے آف اللہ دا ڈونٹس آئی ہیو ٹو فائٹ ان دا وے آف اللہ سو ان اے وے یو کا تیلو نا فی سب اللہ ان دا وے آف اللہ آئی ایم فائٹنگ ان دا وے آف اللہ بائی فالوئنگ دا ڈوز اینڈ دا ڈونٹس فیاق تلون and they fight and they kill so they kill what their psyche wa yuqtalun and they get killed three three in continuation they are not separate people they are one people one person has to do is he has to fight in the way of allah he has to get he has to kill in the way of allah he has to get killed in the way of allah in this he completes this he cannot complete if i fight and i get killed physically i cannot complete the cycle I have to kill, get killed and in the way of Allah. In all these three steps I can do when my psyche is not more mine but my psyche is for Allah. And in, in, the, in the end Allah says, so rejoice. If Allah has purchased your psyche, then rejoice. How a dead man can rejoice? So he says rejoice. When his promise, and who can fulfill his promise than Allah, then rejoice with your deal that you bargain with him. So whoever fights in the way of Allah is against his soul because Allah has purchased his soul or psyche. Allah has purchased his wealth instead uh, in, in return for garden. So who fights in the way of Allah, he, how he fights? By following the do's and the don'ts. And he kills, the don't, he, he kills his own soul The, the wrong doings and, the, and he has to kill his soul to do the right things and get killed also. <clears throat> Next page, Surah Al-Ankabut, Al- Al- 29th Surah and Ayah 69. وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُلَنَا وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمَعَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ and jihadu those who strive in us definitely we will guide them to our ways and surely Allah is with those who do good in this ayah if you note know Allah says those who strive in us in Allah those who strive jihad in Allah those who are striving in Allah in jihad, doing jihad in Allah he will guide to his ways First ayat we read was to seek means to Allah. When we are seeking means to Allah, He will, he will show us the way. In this ayah also, is also saying, وَالَّذِينَ جَهَدُوا فِينَا And who will, those who strive in Allah, in Allah, who will do jihad in Allah. He, وَلَنَادِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُلُنَا Definitely we will guide them to our ways. So there are many ways. To, to reach God. So, but you know what has happened by this, this concept of this ayah that there are, he says, لَنَهْدِ أَنَّمْ سُبُلُنَا Definitely we will guide them to our ways in plural. We thought there is one straight path, sirat mustaqim straight path, but there are many ways, different ways, many, many ways. So how, how, what are those different ways? What are those ways? So people say, everybody in the whole world, whether you are a Jew, whether you are a Christian, whether you are a Buddhist, you are atheist, whatever, everybody is trying in his own way to reach God. That is Allah's ways. This is Allah's ways. He will definitely guide them to our ways, to Allah's ways. All these people are doing conjectures, these confusions in their minds, taking their own way, thinking that that is God's way. So Allah is not guiding them. They are being misguided. When Allah says, surely I will guide them to our, my ways, to Allah's ways, but they are in plural, mentioned in plural, meaning there were many do's 
there is a list of do's and there is a list of don'ts. They are already, they are all different. They are all different. Like if I establish the salah, it's different one, one, one way. But that only one way will not take you to garden. Then other thing is charity. Then other thing is, other thing is another do. Another do. Another do. Another don't. Don't. So if you take up all, there are many, many doings that you have to do. Not only one that you are just keeping the salah with you. Oh, but I am establishing the salah, Allah will take me to the garden. No, no, no. There are many ways. So you have to find out many, many do's, the governing ayahs. They are different altogether, but they are all one spirit. They may be different, but Allah's ways mention Allah guides which is in the Quranic ayahs. So those governing ayahs which can, can, uh, have the do, do and the don'ts, they are all different, but in the ayahs they are, not outside. So Allah will guide you to those ways. So every ayat is a way for, of Allah. Every ayat containing any do or containing any don't. That is the way of Allah. That is what Allah says. وَالَّذِينَ jahadu fina And jahadu, those who strive in us, us means in Allah. لَنَهْدِي أَنَّهُمْ سُبُلُنَا Definitely, we'll, definitely we will guide them to our ways. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمَعَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ And surely Allah is with those who do good. So here we have understood that Allah will guide to many ways that our do's and the don'ts are in plural. So you have to follow all of them, not one do or one don't, many. So every ayat which is a governing ayat is a way of Allah that he is describing. Now in this surah al ankabut and ayah 6, وَمَنْ jahada. فَإِنَّمَا يُجَاهِدُ لِنَفْسِهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَغَنِيٌ عَنِ الْعَالَمِينَ Whoever, whosoever do jihad or strive in Allah, surely yujahidu, he strives for his own self, own psyche or own soul. Surely Allah is free of any need from the worlds. Now if you look at this ayat, the word is woman jahada, whoever strive. Fainama yujahidu, surely he strives. Linafsi. Nafs in Arabic means a soul, a self, or a psyche. Nafsiyat. My psyche. So Allah is telling us whoever do jihad, whoever is striving, he is striving for his own soul, for his own psyche. So again look the word the jihad, two times the word jihad has come and we, they, they, no killing is mentioned. No, you are not going killing anybody. You are doing it jihad for your own self. And why you are doing it? To, to, to have peace in this world and guard on the day of judgment. That's why I, I, I keep on telling you again and again. Why I am doing jihad is to have peace in, in my life in this world and the guard on the other side. So he, Allah is telling you very simply, those who do jihad or strive, is you are not doing some ashan to Allah, you are doing it for your own self, for your own betterment, for your own peace of, uh, uh, peace of mind. It is your own peace of mind. So it's very simple. Woman jahada fa'innama yujahidu li nafsi. Whoever strives, he strives for his own self his own psyche, his own nafsiyat. He's not doing for others. There's no other, I'm not doing jihad for you, with you. I'm doing jihad with my own self, with my own psyche. Why I'm doing it? To have peace in mind, to have peace in my heart. And on the day of judgment, I need the garden. I don't want to burn in fire. That the Muslim keeps in mind all the time. <clears throat> So we come to know by these two ayat that Allah is guiding us to the ways, ways of His ways and whoever doing jihad, He is doing it for His own soul. That, that thing you must keep in mind. Now what happens, there are, there are people who will not, they will not accept, everybody doesn't accept the ayahs of Allah. So in Surah Al-Furqan 25 and Ayah 52, so Allah is addressing here first to the messenger and through the messenger He is addressing to all of us. 
فلا تطع الكافرين وجاهدهم به جهادا كبيرا so you do not obey the rejectors and jahidhum strive against them with this that is the great jihad the great strife this ayat contains this ayat contains jihadan kabira arabic jihadan kabira great jihad the biggest jihad what is the biggest jihad what is the biggest jihad to kill someone or die on a front no first of all do not obey the rejecter and who is a rejecter do you think the christians are rejectors the buddhists are rejectors the hindus are rejectors they are ignorant of the ayats they are ignorant of the ayas you call up anybody look every human whatever the label he carries a jew a christian a hindu or a buddhist or a theist or a label muslim call him ask him he doesn't know so why are you labeling him and fighting him no for for if a person doesn't know the ayas of allah he is an ignorant jahil in arabic ignorant jahil is not a rejecter a rejecter is a person who when the ayas are rehearsed to him he listen to the ayas and he rejects he doesn't practice he is a rejecter who is a rejecter whenever the ayas are rehearsed to any human being whether is a jew whether is a hindu whether is a buddhist whether is an atheist whether is an agnostic whether is a label muslim he listen to the ayas and he rejects he is the rejecter it is not the ignorant people it is not the muslim ignorant people or any other people who are ignorant of the quranic ayats you can't label them as rejecter you start killing them they are ignorant they don't know so allah says fala tutil kafirin so you do not obey the rejecters so ladies and gentlemen the believers or the muslims in the sight of allah will never ever believe the rejectors and rejectors i am explaining to you are those people who listen to the ayas and reject so you do not obey them do not obey the one who have been ayas are rehearsed to them and he rejects don't obey him don't obey the one who rejects the ayas so if he says something do not obey him so the first address is to the messenger because the messenger was reciting the ayas to the people and people listened to the ayas they understood the sense of it and they rejected so to messenger let's say do not do not obey the rejectors do not obey the rejectors and then further he says the further wa jahid hum and then you do jihad and strive with them strive struggle with these people who are rejecting the ayas with the ayas of allah bihi jihadan kabira that is the jihad a great and big jihad the big jihad is not to be the reject, not to be those who are rejecting the ayas the governing ayas the muhkamat ayat they are rejecting the governing ayas the do's and the don'ts they are rejecting they don't believe and they don't practice they are rejecting the ayas so they are the rejectors so you do not obey them so the basic struggle is within our community in our muslim so called level community you do not have to obey the rejecter because they are listening the ayas they know understand the ayas and they reject so when they reject so do not obey them and once you do not obey them then what you have to do you have to do jihad do strive with it this with the quran where the quran contains the do's and the don'ts you because you are governing yourself you educate them so that he start governing the by governing the, he start governing himself by the ayas because it is again the ayas you have to govern your own soul who has done jihad he's done jihad or strive for his own soul so the, the biggest the, that is the greatest jihad that is the biggest jihad or strife the biggest struggle or strife is that you have to confront a person 
who listen to the ayahs and he rejects. Then do not obey him and educate him, jihad him, struggle with him, show him ayahs of the do's and the don'ts so that he converts, he reverts. And this is the biggest jihad in the whole Quran. The biggest jihad mentioned the Isayat. There is no other biggest jihad or greatest jihad in the Quranic ayahs or the strife. That you do not obey the, do not obey the rejectors and then you strive with the Quranic ayahs, the do's and don'ts of the ayahs, you educate him. Asalaamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum. What do you say about killing which is going on in the world in the name of Islam? Uh, is this a jihad? Can you clarify this? Okay. You see, uh, I, when I was referring to one of, in my lectures, I refer in the end also, I referred to Al-Furqan 25.52, Fala tutil kafirin, do not obey the rejectors. Okay? Wa jahidum bi jihadan kabira, and strive with them. You strive with them, who? Those who are rejecting. Those who reject, you strive with them, with this, with the Quranic eyes, the do's and the don'ts, that is the great jihad. Now, people who are doing war, killing each other, as referred to as jihad, basically nowhere in the Quran, the word I was in the beginning, I told you the war means harab. Harab means war. So there is not a single ayah in the Quran which is harab Allah. You know, in the way of Allah, you, you have wars. Not a single ayah. Jihad, we have read these ayahs, which means strive. And after reading the ayahs, we come to know that we have to strive our souls, our psyche, so that we get peace in this world and, and Jannah garden in the other side and good pleasures of Allah. But people who are doing jihad or striving, if you say wars in the name of Islam, then Allah said, do not obey them. Fala tutil kafi, they are rejecting. So do not obey the rejectors. And rejecter, I define those who have listened to the ayahs, they understand the ayahs, and still they reject. So you have to do jihad with them. You have to strive with them. You have to educate them so that they change. The, the opinion about this all, this is also a, a media propaganda also that there is a holy war going on in the world. This is not true in the name of... But what they do is in Surah Al-Baqarah 2 and Ayah 11, When it is said to them, do not do fasad in the earth, do not do corruption in the earth. They say we are doing corrections, we are doing Islam. Islam means corruption. They are doing fasad. Because it, it creates fasad in the world by bloodshed. Because Allah does not need anybody's blood. Allah inna mul mufsiduna wa la yashroon. And they are the people who do corruption and they, do not, they are not even aware of it. So people who are doing jihad in the Quran, it is against their own souls. And against those people who are rejectors. Who listen to the ayahs. And still they don't practice, they don't do, so you, you do jihad with them. With the Quranic ayahs, with the governing ayahs, with the do's and the don'ts, educating them as you have done jihad to yourself. That is the right way of doing jihad. Yes. Assalamu alaikum. Khalid Siddiqui. My question is in Surah Muhammad 47, ayah number 4. Allah is saying to the believers to smite, to smite the necks of the rejectors, which point out that we can make war with the rejectors. Can you please explain? Okay, these, these, these verses, you see these are the verses, that verse he asked, and this verse uh, you are asking, people, the non-Muslims and label Muslim are using as war. So I will read this again in Arabic for you and translate you. You see the, the translation that you are using, Abdullah Yusuf Ali, even if I take that translation and, and the translate, I will for you, and you will see there is no again. The word, in the whole ayat, there is a word harb has occurred. I will, I will read for you. Faida, first I read the Arabic. Faida lakitumu ladina kafaru fa darbar riqab. Hatta ida ath khantumuhum fa shuddul wathaq. Fa imma mannam badu wa imma fidaan hatta tadawul harb. Au zaraha. Dalika. Walau yasha ullahu lantasara minhum. 
I translate and we'll discuss. So when you meet those who reject, listen to listen to a translation and see if the word the Harb is word in the Arabic. But are the believers are allowed to do this? You that we are doing war or not? Look, you know the wars are taking place between the Jews and the hypocrites. That you must consider. The wars are they are doing it. But what is the role of the believers? Allah is saying. So when you meet those who reject, then strike the next until you are thick. In the Arabic word thick means to disagree, disagree with them. Disagree with the rejecters. You thick, you become thick and disagree excessively to the uh, rejecters. And tie them firmly. If you will reject them, there is no physical, there is not to tie their hands or tie their, it's not say tie them. Tie them does not mean physical. If it would have been, they would have mentioned hands. It says tie them. Tie them firmly. What they tie them? Tie them, tie firmly. Then after that, that either he, Allah, favors or either takes ramses, ramsam until the wall lay down its burdens. Now the war is taking place between the Jews and the hypocrites. It laid down its burdens. Now Allah says either Allah, he takes ransom from these people because once you go into the war, people realize that they've been doing wrong. So Allah may take ransom from them, some fidya, or he favors them. They may accept Islam because they were war warring between the two parties. So he says, then after that, either he favors them, people who are having wars, either takes he ransom until the war laid down his burdens. If Allah wills, he would have been victorious from them, but he try Allah being victorious, not the believers or no, Allah being victorious over them because it's a war between Allah, uh, you're raising war against Allah. But he tries some of you with some. And those, uh, listen to me this way, this portion, and those who are being killed in the way of Allah, he will never astray their deeds. Suppose people say they are physical. I repeat, and those who are being killed in the way of Allah, he will never stay their deeds actions. Soon he will guide them and he will correct their condition. If you are killed in the way of Allah, then Allah will guide you in, in correct your condition if you are killed. It, it can be possible. Listen to me very carefully. And those who are killed, وَالَّذِينَ قُتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Those who are being killed in the way of Allah, فَلَنْ يُذِلَّ عَمَالَهُمْ then Allah will not astray their deeds. Sayyadihim wa yuslihu ba'lahum. Soon He will guide them and He will correct their condition. Who? It, who? But these, these verses are re referred to the believers. They were not in the war. They were, they were guiding these people who? The Jews, they were giving the message to the hypocrites. Both they were giving. And if you are killed in the way of Allah, and how you get killed in the way of Allah? So when you kill in the way of Allah, so Allah says, you, Allah will guide you them and will correct their condition. So how you fight in the way of Allah, how you are killed in the way of Allah, the here ayah says, He will guide them after you get killed in the way of Allah. If it is a physical kill, then how He will guide in the way of Allah? Uh, after he, if he, he, he will never astray their actions, soon He will guide them and He will correct their condition. So this ayah, explains that people who are killed in the way of Allah, in the way of Allah, in the way of Allah, not in the wars. So after being killed, Allah says, He will not astray their deeds, number one. Soon then He will guide them and He will correct their condition. It doesn't mean when you are dead that Allah will do this. In real life it is being done. So this verse, this little portion of the verse is for the believers and the upper portion is that either Allah gives them ransom, who those who take part in the in the war, and we have come to know the Jews and the hypocrites are having wars. But in this eye, it is not that the believers are having wars in the way of Allah. It is that when the war is settled down, and we have come to the war was being taking place it between these people. So our job is to educate them. It's not that we are taking part in that war. This is the answer.
My name is Amir. Uh, so, uh, can you please explain the killing uh, mentioned in uh, Surah at Tawbah, Ayat number 5? Okay. You see, these verses are propagated by the Christians and the Jews and showing this uh, that the word is killed here and this, this is why you're asking anyway. So if you read, I should read Surah Tawbah 9 and 5 ayat and 6, I will two, read two verses and read the verses and translate them and you will understand again there is no physical killing. I read first. فَإِذَنْ سَلَقَ الْأَشْرُ الْحُرُمْ فَقْتُلُوا الْمُشْرِكِينَ حَيْتُوا وَجَدْتُمُوهُمْ وَخُدُوهُمْ وَعَصُرُوهُمْ وَقْعُدُوا لَهُمْ كُلَّ مَرْصَدْ فَإِن تَابُوا وَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةِ وَآتُوا الزَّقَاءِ فَخَلُّوا سَبِيلَهُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ وَإِنْ أَحَدٌ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ اسْتَجَارَكَ فَأَجِرْهُ حَتَّى يَسْمَعَ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ أَبْلِغْهُ مَأْمَنَهُ ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ قَوْمٌ قَوْمٌ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Here it says, so when the sacred months are ended, then you fight or kill them whenever you find them. Is referring when the sacred months are ended, you can fight with the mushrikins wherever you find them. And kill also, the word the word here is kill, the mushrikins. You understand this word kill is here. So first of all, we have to understand who is a mushrik. Who in Arabic, mushrik means associates. Who is an associator? Who believes in Allah ayahs and also believes somebody else philosophy? He is a mushrik. Associate. So who believes in Allah's ayahs? The Jews and the Christians and the Hindus and the Buddhists and the atheists and the agnostics are not mushrik. They are jahil of the Quranic ayahs. They are ignorant of the Quranic ayahs. Mushrik is a person who believes in the ayah, who says, I accept the ayah. At the same time, I accept some other people's philosophy also. So he is associating with Allah. So he is a mushrik. You follow this? So Allah says, when the, the sacred months are over, then you kill these people. So when they are ended, now Allah says you kill the associates when these months are passed. So if you take a physical killing, read further, wherever you find them and catch them and confine them and sit on every place of ambush for them. So if they establish salah, if they repent and establish salah, prayer, give zakah, zakah, so leave them, leave the way for them, surely Allah is forgiving, merciful. So if you kill them, <laughs> there will be no chance of repent. I am reading the same verse, look again. So kill the associates, kill the mushriks, wherever you find them. So I found them and catch them, confine them, sit on every place of ambush for them. So if they repent, so if I have already killed, how can they repent? So if they repent and establish salah, prayer and give zakah, justification, so leave them the way. So this is the duty of a believer to keep on doing dawa to the mushriks, to the associates who are associating Allah, ayahs and other, as well other, they are believing in Allah's ayahs and at the same other things also. So believers are to do this, you not kill physically, you have to educate them, keep on educating them. This is doing dawah, that's killing. And further he says, if anyone from them who associates seeks your neighborhood, so if you have killed him, how can he seek your neighborhood? Same, next verse, 5-6. Relationship. So give him the neighborhood until he listens to the word of Allah. فَأَجْرِهُ حَتَّى يَسْمَا kalam Allah. The word of Allah. Then you deliver him to his place of security. That is because there are people who do not know. So this, uh, these ayahs are not a physical slaughter of the mushrits. It is an education to these people because it says they want to seek a neighborhood near you. Near you. They want to seek near your house or near you. They want to, if any one of those associates seeks your neighborhood or relationship, so give him the neighborhood until he listens to the word of Allah. So, and then you deliver him. If you listen to the word of Allah and becomes a believer, then you uh, give him security and safety. So what I'm telling you, these two verses is referring to all times that is not a physical killing. You read them carefully, it's out and look at the context of the text. If you kill them physically, there is no such thing you kill them physically. It is just... It's not even mentioning war. 